this is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted today to be joined with Ben Shalom. It's been a good 24 hours, mate. How are we feeling? Another, you know, another great fight out there. What didn't last long, but for however long it lasted, it was very good. It was good. I mean, it was carnage. It is what it, it, is, what it is. And we knew that it wasn't going to be uh, the most technical fight in the world. For once, the savage was probably the least savage in terms of how he fights. Um, and we knew that going in, Rosansky has an incredible knockout ratio and obviously has hands of steel. I did feel like Babic would do it, but when I was stood there at ringside and it was vibrating and the noise was going, I was thinking, Rosansky's going to jump on him here. And he did. And uh, yeah, either of these guys land that many times, it's going to be game over. But um, yeah, fair play to uh, Rosansky. He deserved it. Obviously, explosive knockout, I hope. Alan is okay, I'm sure he will, I'm sure he'll come again, but a great atmosphere and um, yeah, it tops off a good night. Definitely, you know, the Polish fans are a little bit quiet for the main for the for the whole card and then my god, they, they erupted for the when Rosansky fought. Um, you know, it's, it was crazy out there, a great crowd, definitely. Yeah, it was. I mean for for us, obviously just delighted. Jamie TKV put on a performance I think that really shows what he's about. He's a bit of a diamond in the rough, so to speak, when you make the big signings and the fanfare about the obvious ones. It sort of it sort of makes these signings go on unnoticed, and um, yeah, I'm really proud of him because he has to work harder than other fighters. He has to prove himself more. He had a great amateur record, has turned over later on in his career, and wants to move extremely quickly and wants to be considered with the the Fishers, the Adelaides, the Clarks, the Wardleys. He wants to be in that mix and um, really perform well. I thought Martin Bacoli was devastating. I don't care what you say, he just fought a guy, a Ukrainian Olympian, in Ivan uh, Ihos Shevazutsky, who is an experienced guy and is a guy that was coming to win and it was a guy that has never been stopped before, has never even been beaten before. And um, yeah, it just shows for me why Martin Bacoli is one of the most talented heavyweights in the world. He's still in his 20s, he's a young heavyweight. We're seeing his character come out now, we're seeing him become this larger than life character that we all know. I'm, I'm, I'm just delighted that he's got his ring rust off and not shown a second of ring rust. And um, now we can get active, which he always wanted. For the first time in his career, he probably has a promoter and broadcaster behind him that can, can make sure he gets to those positions where he can force the big fights. And um, yeah, delighted as well for Billy Nelson because it's been a long time coming for him. Definitely, no, it's good to talk, get on the topic of Bacoli because we saw another heavyweight today, another heavyweight here tonight was Dillian White. They definitely weren't short of words for each other. We just saw a video on, on Andrew McCart's Instagram. They were going at it. And, you know, I, don't, I interviewed Dillian White and he had a, a lot of things to say about Martin Bacoli. As a promoter, that's sort of the stuff you love, I'm sure. Listen, I love that fight. And you can see, I don't know what's going on this evening. I've seen a few clips. It looks crazy. It really does. Dillian is, is, a, is a huge character in British boxing and still is. I love that fight. And um, I'm surprised because there's a lot of fighters that will avoid Martin McCauley, that will that will think he's too good. And we see it all the time. Dillian White has never been someone really to duck anyone and he's been in there with the very best. Um, we'd love to make that fight. I think I've heard Dillian saying he wants that fight. That's a proper tear up. And uh, Martin McCauley deserves an opportunity in a big fight. What more can he do? What more can he prove? And um, yeah, uh, hopefully we're going to see that next. Definitely, you know, as a promoter, when you see things like that, is it you you got to lick your lips at that when you see them going at each other? They're selling this fight already, you know. They've they've come head to head. White ain't messing about. Bacoli ain't messing about. They both want it. As a promoter, there ain't really much you have to do now apart from make the fight. No, exactly that. I mean, all I would say is, Martin Bacoli's been here before. Do fighters want to fight him? Let's see. We can make it for a final eliminator in the WBA with Dillian White. It's got all the makers for a monster. Um, but yeah, it's a fight we'd like to see, of course. I don't know exactly. I've heard tables being thrown and all sorts. So I hope it's not got too serious. But it is a fight that I think both of the guys seem to want. So fingers crossed we can make it happen. Definitely moving on. Um, it's been a funny sort of 24 hours since our last interview. Um, obviously, I asked you the question about Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley, Eddie Hearn's comments. Since then, you know, a clip came out on Twitter. Um, of, you, of you know your answer to my interview with Eddie, when Eddie Hearn replied saying you know oh it sounds like he doesn't want the fight then he further done an interview with, with um, Charlie saying you know you know your comments were unprofessional or not unprofessional sorry um, that you know it was you know you were undermining your fight R it was unprofessional and this and that your sort of response to that give you the right reply look I think um, if you watch that interview 
It's quite clear what I'm saying. It was a little clip. We've been trying to make the Fabio Wardley fight way before the purse bids. So of course we want the fight. You could speak to his team. My understanding, he's a free agent. Did we expect the purse bids? No. Does the fight happen, has to happen when Eddie says to Fraser it has to happen in June? No. That's all it is. We want to make that fight. We've been trying to negotiate it before. We will continue to try and make a deal. And uh, as I say, I don't. it's hard because it's come out of nowhere, but then the comments as well have come out of nowhere as though he's putting on the fight and fair play. But as I say, our understanding, and we're with his team this week with Babic, and for us, it's quite. we're being told he's a free agent, and so that's why we've been trying to make the fight beforehand. I think what I want to make clear is the fight... We want the fight. We're the ones that have been calling for the fight. We were the ones that were trying to negotiate the fight before the purse bid. I was questioning how purse bids are ordered and how did that come about? Because it seems slightly suspicious in, in terms of a negotiation. Um, but yeah, I think uh, a little bit of game play, playing. I think Fraser probably rose to Eddie's bait and he's very good at that in terms of, in terms of around the June date. Um, but yeah, it's a fight that we've been pushing for. And, we're the ones that want to make that fight. Definitely, I think uh, Eddie Hearn and Fraser Clark actually had a little bit of a back and forth today at the um, at the Cordina Reckham fight. You're, I'm sure you don't know much about it, but is it interesting to sort of see things like that? Look, I think it's good. Fraser Clark would have fought Fabio Wardley in his first fight, and that's no disrespect to Fabio Wardley. I don't want it to get like that. He is a fantastic fighter that's come from a white collar background and to to get to a British title and have that performance against Nathan Gorman that I think many didn't see coming. You have to give your respect to Fabio Wardley, without a doubt, but he knows we're trying to make that fight. We've been trying to negotiate that fight and put a deal in place to make that the biggest fight possible. That's what we want. We want the biggest fights possible for Fraser Clark. And um, yeah, it would be a record in British heavyweight history. Just look at, he's had six fights. Joe Joyce, who turned over very old in relative terms, 12th fight British title Anthony Joshua I think 14th fight this would be unprecedented that doesn't mean we don't want the fight that's something we were pressing for we just want it in the biggest possible way and um, I think as I say it's not for for an, uh, another promoter to decide necessarily when that event is um, we're still not even close to Perspith well Ben thank you for your time I'm going to say thank you for this week in Poland you know, you've done it again another great show and uh, another good time just uh, travelling over watching Poland another good show thank you mate cheers yeah. for that thank you cheers, cheers mate top man